And hi, gang, I'm my radar meteorologist, Matt Capucci. Halloween 2019 started as a normal day in Buffalo, New York, but then water levels on Lake Erie jumped nearly five and a half feet, causing big time flooding along the lakefront. The culprit, something called a seiche. The Great Lakes don't really have tides. Their waters are still affected by the sun and the moon, but their semi-diurnal or twice a day increases and decreases in water levels are just too small to notice. Their biggest shifts caused by planetary motions, roughly about two inches. Thus, NOAA considers them to be non-tidal. So how did Buffalo get a nearly six foot sudden wave without warning? It wasn't a tsunami because there were no earthquakes nearby. That's why we have to turn to the weather. At 6.54 p.m. on that day, winds were light and variable right around eight miles per hour. Gentle rain was falling, but there wasn't much in the way of storminess. But just six minutes later, right around 7 p.m., winds spiked to 50 miles per hour as a cold front came through. The winds were gusting out of the west-southwest, parallel to the length of the lake. They stayed gusting over 30 miles per hour for the next 12 hours behind that cold front. Doppler radar shows a narrow, low top end of showers and downpours along the front as it swept in from the west-southwest. Over the lake, winds can rush even faster since there's not much friction. That means there were probably gusts well over 60 miles per hour. That helped push water towards the eastern shore of the lake. Eventually, that resulted in a nearly six foot wall of water being propelled onto shore, causing big time flooding. The wind speed and direction were perfect since there was a long fetch running along the lake. Here's a chart of water levels in Buffalo. What makes this a sage is that the water had to come from somewhere else. On the opposite end of Lake Erie, water levels dropped simultaneously. Here's a chart showing a three to four foot dip at Marblehead, Ohio, right near Toledo. Residents along the eastern lakeshore reported significant flooding. The National Weather Service had issued a lake shore flood warning, writing very high wave action will also result in significant shoreline erosion. Seiches in the Great Lakes aren't terribly uncommon. In the wintertime, though, they can combine with icy conditions to yield damaging ice shoves that literally push millions of pounds of ice onto shore. Strong winds over Lake Erie on February 24th and 25th, 2019, pushed a 10-foot wall of ice ashore, prompting police in Hamburg, New York, to issue voluntary evacuation orders. Winds gusted at 74 miles per hour at Niagara Falls, 72 at Hamburg, and 69 miles per hour in Buffalo. That event was also from a sage, albeit a slightly slower one. Water levels at Sturgeon Point, New York, rose by 4.13 feet in two and a half hours time. Temperatures fell by a dozen degrees in just 10 minutes as winds picked up and air pressure rose behind a cold front. I think that one may have also been connected to something called a Kelvin wave, which occurs when a disturbance is affected by the Coriolis force or Earth's spin and is amplified along a boundary like the shore of the lake. Ice pileups can be incredibly destructive. On May 11, 2013, at least seven homes were destroyed by an ice shove on the southwest side of Dauphin Lake in Manitoba, Canada. Seiches can only occur in closed bodies of water, but they do have an oceanic cousin. We call it the Meteo Tsunami. On December 20th, 2018, a one-foot meteo tsunami brought flooding in Naples, Florida, right along the southwest side of the peninsula. The meteo tsunami was raising ahead of a line of thunderstorms along the leading edge of thunderstorm exhaust, or outflow. Winds gusted over 50 miles per hour. The same storm system brought damaging winds and tornadoes across the Sunshine State. Follow My Radar on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.